Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I'm continuing my research into using Raspberry Pi Pico as low-capacity data storage for my 6502 computer. Last time, we looked at data level shifting to match the 3.3 volt signal of the Pico with the 5 volt signal of the 6502. This time, we'll connect the two together and try to transfer some data. So why don't you join me as we try to load a program stored on my Raspberry Pi Pico into my 6502 computer. My 6502 computer is based on the 6530-004 TIM chip that was introduced in 1976, shortly after the 6502. In addition to a low-speed serial port, this terminal program also included a high-speed paper tape reader interface. This was implemented by using eight inputs of the 6530 chip for data and two additional ports for data flow control. The paper tape format is the MOS technology hex file format, which has kind of become an orphan. Each record begins with a semicolon, followed by two hexadecimal digits denoting the length of the data of the record. The next four characters, which are two bytes, represent the starting address of the data. Up to 24 bytes, which is 48 characters, of data follow. Then there is a four character, two byte checksum Finally, a re the record ends with a carriage return, a line break, and six null characters. The last record on the paper tape is empty, basically a semicolon followed by two ASCII zeros. This stops the load process. Although verbose and slow, it was a fairly reliable format when most microcomputer communications were via paper tape. This is a demonstration of importing 48 bytes using a 300 baud terminal, which is three times faster than a normal ASR33 teletype of the day. This took about four and a half seconds. This converts to about 11 bytes per second, not really fast. One way to speed things up is to use a parallel port. As I mentioned earlier, the TIM chip has the program and hardware needed to implement a high-speed paper tape reader. The reader outputs 8 bits and then pulses the data ready line high. The TIM takes the data and then pulses the data taken line high. Simulating a high speed paper tape reader is my next step in utilizing the Pico as a low speed storage device for the 6502. I'll connect 8 GPIO pins on the Pico through level shifters to the TIM chip data inputs. Two more GPIO lines will connect the TIM data ready and data taken lines. I wrote a program in MicroPython to open a text file in Pico and send it to the 6502 while controlling the data flow signals and software. From my previous trials, I knew the timing might be a little tight, but I thought software control would still be okay. Here's a flow chart of the program. After I initialize the Pico, I open the desired data file and read the first ASCII character. I convert that character to binary and output the individual bits to the data GPIO pins that are connected to the TIM chip. Then I set the data ready line high to tell the 6502 that the data is ready for it to take. The Pico then enters a loop while it waits for an interrupt that tells it that the 6502 has taken the data. The Pico immediately turns off the data ready signal, reads the next character in the text file, converts it to binary, and outputs it to the GPIO pins. One thing that was a little tricky for me was dealing with ASCII characters. In a previous video, I demonstrated how to output an integer that I had generated to the GPIO pins of the Pico. However, when I used ASCII characters read from a file, I got into all kinds of data type errors. After piecing together little clues here and there, I found I could use the ORD function which converts a Unicode character into integer. Let's see how that works. I've opened up both Thani for the Pico and Hyperterminal for the 6502. The 6502 starts reading the data, but exits the program after only a few bytes. The TIM only provides a five microsecond data taken pulse before it immediately starts scanning for another data ready signal. I suspect that MicroPython on the Pico is not quick enough to turn off the data ready signal within 5 microseconds of receiving the data taken signal. 
I'll add a print statement to see how many times the data taken interrupt triggers while the data ready signal is high. Eh, just as I suspected. Sometimes the 6502 takes the same byte two or more times before the Pico can turn off the data ready signal. Even though the 6502 only has a one megahertz clock, the program is in machine language and is much faster than MicroPython. I need to turn off the data ready signal immediately after the data taken signal is received. I guess I've got two choices. I can either rewrite the program in a much faster language like C, C++, or I can solve the problem in hardware. Since I don't feel like learning C on the Pico at this moment, and I like hardware design, I decide to add an edge triggered D flip-flop to clear the data ready signal as soon as a data taken signal was received. I connected the data ready signal from the Pico to the clock of the 74LS74 flip-flop and the inverse of the data taken signal from the 6502 to the clear on the flip-flop. The Q output of the flip-flop is connected to the data ready input of the 6502. The data ready signal will now look like this and will force the 6502 to wait for valid data. After wiring it up, let's test it. I'll add a print statement to print a period every time I send a semicolon. That is, every 60 characters or 24 bytes. This looks much better. A quick check of memory confirms that the program did, in fact, load into memory. It took 28 seconds to transmit over 26,000 characters, which loaded in over 10,000 bytes. That's 900 characters per second, sending 370 bytes per second much better than the 11 bytes per second we previously saw. It's also three times faster than the 300 character per second speed of a digital equipment high-speed paper tape reader of the era. However, it's still over 10 times slower than an early five and a quarter inch single density floppy disk drive. Thanks for joining me today. We successfully connected a Raspberry Pi Pico to my 6502 computer and emulated a paper tape reader while loading a program into the 6502. Although it was much faster than a high-speed paper tape drive of the day, it's still incredibly slow by today's standards. However, I'm very satisfied with this trial. You might wonder why I'm using a Raspberry Pi Pico that's an order of magnitude more powerful than my 6502 to act as its lowly file server. The answer is, because I can. Really, it makes me happy to work with signals that are slow enough to watch on a scope and design circuits that work with old school ICs. Older machines like the 6502 are easy to understand and are great for learning how computers work. Today's machine with gigahertz speeds and multiple cores, threads, and pipelines are just too complicated for me to completely understand. Since I'm not an IT person, but I still like to dive into the gory details, I prefer the older machines. If you like this video, or you think someone else might, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. The more likes this video has, the more YouTube will recommend it to others. Also, please leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon.